This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Kara Schallenberg. Letters of Two Brides by Honoré de Balzac. Letter 41. The Baron de Macumer to the Vicomtesse de l'Estrade. Paris. Poor sweet, Macumer and I forgave you all your naughtiness when we heard of your terrible trouble. I thrilled with pain as I read the details of the double agony, and there seem compensations now in being childless. I am writing at once to tell you that Louis has been promoted. He can now wear the ribbon of an officer of the Legion. You are a lucky woman, Renée, and you will probably have a little girl, since that used to be your wish. The marriage of my brother with Mademoiselle de Mortsauf was celebrated on our return. Our gracious king, who really is extraordinarily kind, has given my brother the reversion of the post of first gentleman of the chamber, which his father-in-law now fills, on the one condition that the scutcheon of the Mortsaufs should be placed side by side with that of the Lenincourts. The office ought to go with the title, he said to the Duc de Lenincourt Givry. My father is justified a hundredfold. Without the help of my fortune nothing of all this could have taken place. My father and mother came from Madrid for the wedding, and returned there, after the reception which I give to-morrow for the bride and bridegroom. The carnival will be a very gay one. The Duke and Duchesse de Soria are in Paris, and their presence makes me a little uneasy. Marie Heredia is certainly one of the most beautiful women in Europe, and I don't like the way Philippe looks at her. Therefore I am doubly lavish of sweetness and caresses. Every look and gesture speak the words which I am careful my lips should not utter. She could not love like this. Heaven knows how lovely and fascinating I am. Yesterday Madame de Maufrigneuse said to me, "'Dear child, who can compete with you?' Then I keep Philippe so well amused that his sister-in-law must seem as lively as a Spanish cow in comparison. I am the less sorry that a little abencerrage is not on his way, because the Duchess will no doubt stay in Paris over her confinement, and she won't be a beauty any longer. If the baby is a boy, it will be called Philippe, in honour of the exile. An unkind chance has decreed that I shall, a second time, serve as godmother. Good-bye, dear. I shall go to Chantepleur early this year, for our Italian tour was shockingly expensive. I shall leave about the end of March, and retire to economise in Nivenay. Besides, I am tired of Paris. Philippe sighs, as I do, after the beautiful quiet of the park, our cool meadows, and our Loire, with its sparkling sands, peerless among rivers. Chantepleur will seem delightful to me after the pomps and vanities of Italy, for, after all, splendour becomes wearisome, and a lover's glance has more beauty than a capo d'opera or a bel quadro. We shall expect you there. Don't be afraid that I shall be jealous again. You are free to take what soundings you please in Macumer's heart, and fish up all the interjections and doubts you can. I am supremely indifferent. Since that day at Rome Philippe's love for me has grown. He told me yesterday—he is looking over my shoulder now—that his sister-in-law, the Princess Heredia, his destined bride of old, the dream of his youth, had no brains. Oh, my dear, I am worse than a ballet dancer if you knew what joy that slighting remark gave me. I have pointed out to Philippe that she does not speak French correctly. She says, a simple for example, sane for saint, chou for je. She is beautiful, of course, but quite without charm or the slightest scintilla of wit. When a compliment is paid her, she looks at you as though she didn't know what to do with such a strange thing. Philippe, being what he is, could not have lived two months with Marie after his marriage. Don Fernand, the Duc de Soria, suits her very well. He has generous instincts, but it's easy to see he has been a spoilt child. I am tempted to be naughty and make you laugh, but I won't draw the long bow. Ever so much love, darling. End of letter 41 Read on August 30th, 2007, in Oceanside, California.